Leighton Orient Women's Football Club. The O's had hoped to be lighting up the FA Women's National League this season, but due to government restrictions, many of their games have been postponed. After a run of five matches unbeaten, the league has been suspended. The girls have been forced to swap the training ground for Zoom sessions, and the fans want to know what has the experience been like for them? So we found out. Welcome to Lockdown Orient. Hello and welcome to episode five of Lockdown Orient. This is our Leighton Orient Women's Podcast. I am joined this week as ever by my partner in crime, Zavi Bird. How are you, Zavi, this week? I'm doing very well, Nick. Very excited to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. And we are joined this week by Georgia Bracelli and Kate Kerr. I'm Georgia. I'm a midfielder and I play for Leighton Orient Women. I work as a fundraising executive for Bernardo's Children's Charity. Hi, my name is Kate Kerr and I play centre-back for Leighton Orient Women. I am a runner for a post-production house called Final Cut in Oxford Circus. Ultimately, I don't want to be a runner, I want to be an editor, um, doing stuff like music videos, dramas, documentaries. Getting a call up uh, from the Italian under-17s national team uh, which is something I'll always remember and always be proud of. When um, I won the sectional championship for my high school team for the first time in my high school's history, um, and that was really fun and exciting. We all got like raincoats that said sectional champions on the back, which was really cool. Definitely Kaka. Um, I'm so pleased like now uh, young women can look up to women's footballers because I didn't really have that when I was growing up. So. Uh, I'm really happy that that's changing today. Kevin De Bruyne, I love, I think he's a brilliant player, I love his style of play, I think he's so exciting to watch um, and uh, yeah, I just think that he's probably one of the best players I've ever seen. Being able to captain the team um, in our first win of the season this year, um, so even though I'm quite a new player, it was a big honour to be asked to be captain and getting a 3-0 win over Stevenage and kind of moving our season in the right direction was a great honour and something I'll remember for a long time. Winning the second round of the FA Cup against um, Actonians in the 2-1 two win, two, two win in like the 90th, 90th minute, that was just like fantastic. Um, I honestly think it's probably the best day of my life. <laughs> Definitely just seeing family and friends and people I haven't been able to see for over 12 months. So I think that's my main plan. Um, probably just go to the pub, watch the football. Um, the Euros actually will be on this, this summer, so I think that will be brilliant to go back into the pubs for that. That will be a proper atmosphere and that will be really, really fun. Rather than just sat at home watching it. I'm just going to go full stereotypical Italian here and say pizza. Um, yeah, if I could choose only one food, it'd be pizza. Probably my dad's pizza. Um, and if I could, I definitely would eat pizza every day. A chicken korma, peshwari naan, and coconut rice. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and maybe some steamed veggies on the side, just, you know, get some greens in. Spending time with my teammates, winding down by eating, drinking, um, having a chat about the game, but having a chat about anything that's going on and yeah, just relaxing, not moving too much um, and yeah, having some quality time with my teammates. I love a good bubble bath, um, just like, you know, probably soaking all my muscles, get all the bath salts, all the, um, you know, bath bombs and rubber duckies and yeah, that really yeah, it makes me feel relaxed. <laughs> so the aim of this podcast is uh, to connect the fans with the players whilst we can't be at games. So I'm sure all the fans are wondering, uh, how go have you guys been getting on in lockdown? Uh, Georgia, we'll come to you first because you've you've been away now since lockdown one. So how has it been? Yeah, it's been strange to be away from London for so long. I was in London for the first lockdown, so until the end of the summer. And then when lockdown two came around in end of October time, I decided to come back to Italy. And I've been staying at my parents' house, which is in like a tiny, tiny village in the Italian Alps. So very different to London. So it took some adjusting because I haven't lived at home for about 
five years. Uh, but I can't say it's been bad because I've really, really enjoyed it. Like it's been really great to be back in the mountains. And obviously we've been in lockdown here. People have been in lo- lockdown in London. So I haven't felt like I've missed out. And Kate, how's it been in Homerton and Hackney? <laughs> Um, it's been pretty sad not being able to go out and do anything. Uh, it's been really quiet. I am still working though. So I'm, I'm really lucky to sort of have that because I'm able to get out of the house, which I'm very grateful for. Um, cause I'm in a flat share currently with like four other people and they all work from home. So yeah, very glad that I'm not also sat at a desk in the house all day long. Um, so yeah, I, I work in Oxford circus as well. So it's just been like dead so that nothing's going on so it's actually quite nice but but yeah it's just like no one's out so it's a bit of a weird time um so I've actually been working like on and off quite a lot so yeah missing having football as an outlet though of course have you been taking part in the the zoom training Georgia yeah yeah I really enjoy the zoom trainings actually uh we do them Tuesdays and Thursdays um and they're so hard but you feel like you get so much out of them and they've really ramped up the competitiveness over the past few weeks and I've definitely enjoyed that because we have to kind of type in how many reps we've done um and it's always really good to see how you stack up against everyone else so everyone's really putting the work in with all training very hard even if we're in our bedrooms or gardens so yeah it's been really good have you You found it a challenge we had a burpee challenge uh, last night. Mm. It was really, really difficult. And Tag is brilliant. Um, he's like our trainer. And we did like only half of the burpee challenge last night as well. And it was like exhausting. And at the end of it, he was like, oh, next time we'll like complete the whole challenge. It's like, cool. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be able to physically do that. I think I'm a bit concerned for my health and safety. Who tends to win the most challenges, Georgia? Oh, I think it's always quite close. I think yeah. Lauren is definitely always up there. She's really good at all kinds of challenges. So if it's running or any kind of fitness, she's up there. I think people put in a good shift. I think Egg's always right to the, at the top. Kate's always up there as well. I feel like they're always quite close as well. So I always kind of look what Kate's done. Yeah, like, me and Georgia are always <laughs> really close. I'm always competing with Georgia. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really good because you actually feel like you get a lot more out of it because you miss that side of training when you're just in your room um, because you don't get that competitive side when you're trying to beat someone to a sprint. So ramping up that side has definitely made it a lot more engaging. But I'm just so glad we're on mute because last night I was just breathing so heavily and I thought if anyone could hear me, I did just think I was on the verge of being hospitalised. So I'm just glad. (laughs) And away from football um, a little bit, how have you guys been spending your lockdown? Obviously we're on lockdown three now, so I think we're beyond the banana bread, but uh, have you <laughs> picked anything up? Have you been reading a lot? Any new TV shows, anything like that, that you've, you've had? Um, I've, I've always had sort of little arts and crafts that I've enjoyed doing, but I've sort of taken up pottery, which has been really mm-hmm. fun. Um, Cause I think for Christmas, my mom, uh, she likes to get me like these experiences. So she's got like a two hour like um, pottery throwing class. So I did that when you could kind of go back um, at some point you know, between lockdowns. Um, so I did that and that was great. And then they had an option to buy your own sort of three kg of clay. So I've just had clay. I've just been like making pots and I made a fox incense candle, which wow. was pretty cool. But so yeah, it's just, I, I guess I've been doing that and drawing and painting. I made a bench or I didn't make a bench, but I painted a pub bench um the first lockdown so I've been trying to you know keep my creative side going no I think every lockdown has been a bit different I was reading a lot in the first lockdown but this lockdown I've been because I've been at home I've picked up something that I hadn't been doing since I was really small so we've got a piano and I hadn't played for 10 years um so I've picked that up and pretty much every day I just go and sit and like learn new songs and it's just been really therapeutic because the weather's not been great you couldn't really go outside and it was something to completely take my mind away from work because I'm working from home on a screen all day Mm -hmm. and then I watch tv and it's just something completely different so I've really enjoyed that um and then I'm lucky because I live in the mountains so I've actually been able to go skiing um I try not to brag about it too much because everyone is stuck in lockdown in cities, but so I have, which has been great. <laughs> yeah, it's been really good. Georgia, you grew up in Italy. So is women's football um, kind of big over there? Did you play growing up? Did you play for a girls team? Uh, kind of how did you get into it? 
Yeah, so women's football is getting a lot bigger now, especially since the 2019 World Cup. It was the first one Italy qualified for in 20 years, I think. So that's definitely given it a big boost. But when I was growing up, I had no idea about women's football. I didn't even know it was a thing. Um, so I pretty much started playing since I was like really, really young, like a toddler, because my dad played football and my older brother played football. So I just kind of got into it that way. And I joined the boys team when I was nine and I just played with them until I was, well, until I could, until I was 15. Um, um, and I just loved it. And I was the only girl and I've always been the only girl and it never bothered me because it was just really enjoyable. And I, I had a really good time and a good bond with the teammates. And I think it's quite a usual uh, experience for a lot of girls who've played with boys that once you earn their respect, you have the best time, but you have to work to, to get that because they immediately assume, oh, you're a girl, like you're not going to be very good. Um, but once you actually show them you can actually play, um, it's yeah, it's really good, really satisfying. So I only started playing with women when I was 15. Um, and I played in Milan, so it was quite a journey for me. I had to travel two hours to training and back. Uh, so it was quite a big commitment with my for me and my family as well. Um, but yeah, I've always loved it. And I played with women until I kind of left the Italy to come to the UK. So I moved over to come to uni and then I've stayed over ever since. Um, but yeah, I've played pretty much for my whole life. Um, and even as soon as I moved to London, I immediately tried to join like, Leighton Orient because I just, even though I moved into the world of work, I didn't want to leave football behind. I'm glad, even though lockdown has kind of put a spanner in the works in terms of actually playing games, I'm glad I've kept football alongside because I don't think I could give up just yet. Where did you go to uni in the UK when you moved over? I went to Birmingham, Birmingham Uni. And did you play for a, the women's team there? Yeah, so I played for the first team in the university. So I played for, I played books football and um, for them. And then in my final year, I also played um, for a team as for a national league team um, for the Midlands. So I played for two teams, which is quite intense. But I went on a year abroad when I was at uni in my third year and I went to Sweden. So I got to experience football in Sweden as well. So it's been quite nice to like play in Italy, play in Sweden, play in England and see kind of how it changes in different countries. So I've really, really enjoyed that. We uh, it's quite nice actually. We heard last week <laughs> from Lisa um, that oh, yeah. women's football is really kind of big in Sweden. Did you feel that? Did you feel it's a different culture? Yeah, yeah, massive. Uh, there was loads of young girls playing. So I was playing for a first team in the town, a university town I was uh, studying in. But every time we went to training, there was loads and loads of young girls just kind of coming along, and it just seemed perfectly normal. And it looked as if it had been for years and years it didn't look like it used to be a male sport and now women's football was just coming through like it just looked like a staple um but my, the funniest thing about football in sweden was the limits on how cold it could be before training could be cancelled um so obviously it's really really cold in sweden and we had a limit which if it was colder than minus 12 uh, we didn't train but if it was minus 12 or above <laughs> we'd train and I was like minus 12 is really cold like what's the difference between minus 12 and minus 13 but that was the rule so that was it <laughs> growing up playing football in Milan to that that's like, yeah. uh, that's quite a change it was a struggle I remember just lying on my bed thinking do I really want to go to training or do I really want to play football it really made me question <laughs> everything <laughs> Have you kind of picked up different things from each country that you've been in in terms of your style and your the way that you play I think so. I think more looking back, I can see the differences. So I, th I think in Italy, it was a lot more technical. So in Sweden, it was very, very tactical. And in England, it's very physical. So I feel like you really see the difference. But until you're in the next stage, you didn't realise how it was. Um, so yes, it's very interesting. And even training changes quite a bit, kind of what the focus is on. Um, but yeah, it's, I really, really enjoyed it because, and I definitely want to go back to like either Italy or Sweden or even another country to see what it's like there. Or like Kate, so I was experienced American football. So like in the US, it's just completely different again. So yeah, it's really fun to see how it changed in different countries. And that is a, a lovely way to lead us on to Kate. Uh, sure, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Over to you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as Georgia mentioned, um, yeah, I played uh, football in America. Um, I was born in England, so like, some of my first memories were like kicking a football back and forth with my dad, like in the alleyway between like my house and Kingston. Um, that was like my first memory. And then um, I got moved over to the States when I was six. So um, football is quite a big part of um, like sports in general, just a massive thing for kids growing up in the States. I played like 
five or six different sports all throughout my childhood so like every summer I was like booked into every like sports camp possible I was like playing basketball and I'd go over to like swimming and then from swimming to like football training and then tennis it was like constant um so I played a lot of sports in general but football was always the one that you know I personally loved because my dad played growing up and and it's obviously a big part of my like culture um so I always played that and that was always my favorite and um, George mentioned studying abroad as well. And I also went to, I went to New Zealand. So I played in New Zealand as well. Um, so I played all throughout growing up in the States. And that was like a huge, like really, really competitive um, like tournaments every weekend. It was really quite intense, um, you know, good at tournaments and things like that. And there'd be like college, or I guess, you know, in England, it was uni. But college is the same thing. So like college scouts would be at tournaments. It was so intense. It's like after at the end of games, everyone would be asking who came up to you and who spoke to you. So it was always very, you know, quite competitive growing up. Um, and then I went on to uh, Franklin and Marshall College, which is a very small uh, town called Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And I played there as well. And then went to New Zealand for four or five months and played in New Zealand as well. Um, so yeah, I've, I've like, similarly to George, I've played all of my life and uh, I would never, ever stop playing. I was just going to say, you were talking about how competitive it is in America. How, how, how long do you reckon it's going to take for England to get to a similar level as uh, where I America's think, at and the women's yeah. team? Well, I think England's definitely on, on the way now. I think just, just these past few years, I think it's been really important. Like grassroots football, especially for women, is really quite like a trend at the moment. Like everyone's definitely investing a lot more money and time into it, which is great to see. Um, but like I said, I mean, I, I grew up in the States and it was 2005 and it was, you know, massive. Like every girl was playing it and it was, you know, full on like facilities and coaching staff. Like there was no difference basically between the girls and the, and the boys. Um, and it was always like that. So I think it's, you know, only recently becoming more of a thing in England. So my, my parents sort of said like, they're not sure how much football I would have played if I stayed in the UK versus, you know, going to the States. Um, Cause it was just part of the culture is that every kid had like a sport to play. Um, so yeah, it was definitely more, intense for me growing up in the states than I think it would would have been if I stayed in in England at what point did you come back over here then and and kind of get involved with Orient did you get involved with Orient as soon as you came back over um no it was actually a a slower process for me because I I finished uni in 2017 and then moved to England that same year um it was a bit spontaneous it wasn't that wasn't really the plan at all it just kind of happened so then I, I sort of moved to London. It was a bit panicky because I didn't really know what I was actually doing with myself. So I was kind of trying to sort my life out and get a job and, you know, find a place. I was just living with my grandma. Um, so it took a, a year for me to actually sort of sort it all out. And then I just joined the five-a-side league. Um, so they're called Victoria Park Vixens and they play for the Super 5 League um, just in like Mabley Green in Hackney. Um, so I was doing that for a while, just playing like five-a-side or I play with uh, my boyfriend and a bunch of our mates um you know just like a big group of us go play like a five side or eventually just be like a ten side sort of a nine side sort of game um and after like doing that for maybe half a year I was just like oh it's just not the same I'm I'm such a competitive person as well so like these girls they were just sort of going out just to you know, like socialize and just have a good sort of kick about where I was I was just like I really need this to be more intense um, because I think I was like sometimes scaring them because I was just really wanted to win these games. I wasn't, I I wasn't trying to make any friends. Like I'm going to win this game. I'm sorry. Um, So I think, I think I needed to find an 11 side team that, you know, other girls could understand my competitiveness. So um, five side was great. I absolutely loved it, but yeah, I need, I had to find something else. So I found late annoying and uh, yeah, it's been great. But <laughs> this means that all that is left to say is thank you so much, Kate and Georgia, for joining us. It's been a genuine pleasure. I've had so much fun. Um, and thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you. It's been loads of fun. Definitely a good Friday night activity. Thank you so much, Zavi, as always, for being with me. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you. Cheers. And we will see everyone again next week for episode six uh see you all then this has been lockdown orient see you soon bye 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 bye